Welcome back to another Alliance War video. We have the last war of the season. We're going up, four Loki's going up against Chaos. They banned Scorpion, Spidey 99, and Ghost for the final war of the season. Um, damn, I just realized that KP wasn't banned um, this war. We probably underutilized KP quite a bit. Um, I am using Mantis, Omega Sentinel, and White Magneto this war. Um, a very uh, different team. Um, in terms of Mantis, I uh, haven't used her at all this season. I absolutely love Mantis. Um, I think she's great. I just think her Tranquilize is trash. Um, <laughs> I just wish it wouldn't fall off when you unload your special two, personally. Um, you can slow play her combo and keep it up um, versus science, which is great. But versus any non-science, it's really just useless. Uh, Karate Mike uh, disagrees with me quite a bit on that. Uh, but we'll get to that a little bit later. And I'm just looking at these fights that I have. That thing, I have a uh, Storm Pyramid X, Sauron. Both those last two are going to be taken with Omega Sentinel. I have a Mysterio on Path 5, Ebb and Flow Intercept with Mighty Charge. And a Photon on Ebb and Flow Intercept with Mighty Charge as well. So, first up is this thing. And I, I went back and forth on who to take uh, for these, you know, the thing, Mysterio, and Photon. I was going to originally take Zemo. And Zemo can do thing. It was just gonna be quite slow, and and I just didn't like him for Mysterio really. And I like Mantis for Mysterio and Photon, but not for Thing, because her big SP2 basically will just trigger protection. So off of doing some duels um, against the Abyss thing and trying to m measure her SP3 damage, because you can still get the Furies from heavy charging and putting them to sleep. Um, and if you get the Furies, you can still throw a special. So I decided that I was basically going to use my um, the uh, the debuffs that, that, that you that infuriate to have him come at me at the beginning, and then place the intimidate to have him hold block, and uh, then I can get him over 15 stacks and just build my emotions that way, and kind of repeat that process as I build up to an SB3. He only has about 160, 170k health, so my thought was like, okay. I can just do this and launch my SB3 and uh, do significant damage, it'll trigger protection and he'll almost be dead if not dead. So you see that's what I'm doing now here at first, trigger that Intimidate so he throws that um, that 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 special, now the uh, the Intimidate, I'm sorry, sorry here, the Infuriate first, now Intimidate. He's at 15 here, I'm already at 20 uh, charges, so at this point now I'm just counting rock stacks. I'm just uh, doing combos to basically um, to build my power. And, uh, and he's at uh, 10 stacks here, and I throw it at 14, and I heavy charge, I'm going to release. Before I hit him, I'm going to throw my SB3, so he's at 15 when I throw the SB3. So after, if this doesn't kill him, I love her SB3, by the way. If this doesn't kill him, he'll be at 15 stacks, and he'll throw, um, you know, he'll throw a special and, and dump them all. But he's dead anyways. That was 100k special 3. And, uh, and and it worked. That worked great. That that was the only fight I didn't love Mantis for, but uh, I figured out a way just to kind of you know take him down uh, slowly and then with the SB3. This is the uh, Power Snack Power Sting uh, Mini uh, No 25, and uh, Omega Sentinel is just perfect for this because she is uh, Nullify immune, so no Power Snack. She also can't have her ability accuracy reduced by mutants, which is not stopping the glancing from uh, the limiting the damage, but it is stopping um, from limiting the uh, the prowess removal. So uh, with Omega Sentinel, you know she she can still remove the prowess, but it, the, the damage still glances. So with this node, I I was you know I was debating on what to do. Um, I do have a. Max recoil on from my previous fight with uh, with Thing, so I don't want to throw any special twos. So I'm like, okay, I know if I throw a special three, I'm gonna push her over a bar of power, and and after the animation, the Sting will apply, and then it will cause me to get damage. So I'm thinking like, if I can have her dump all her power, maybe I don't push her over a bar of power. But as a minute has gone by, I'm just like, you know, 20% done in a minute. I'm not doing a five minute fight. I'm just gonna eat the damage off the SB3 and uh, and then just pause the debuff. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm going to hit a pause and bait this. 
and I'm going to basically throw my special three. You see me trying to hit the special button right there. And after I come out with this, she is going to be over a bar, which will trigger the power sting, which will then go off and cause about 20% damage um, to me. I'll be like at 80, well not 20%, but part 15%, yeah, I'm at 83%, so 14%. And at this point, I just want to keep this paused, so... Um, you know, those that, that tick is 1.7k a tick, so over 3k uh, a second, and all I'm doing basically is keeping it paused and, uh, and just hitting her. I didn't turn on um, um, collar tech for this fight because I didn't want to push her over and above constantly and with collar tech and the armor burn, that's what would have happened. So I just figured the armor burn would be enough, and, uh, and it was really, really smooth fight. His next fight, I have Solon on Evan, Flo, Intercept, and Sadist, and he's uh, you know these are all uh, these are all our two uh, seven stars that I'm taking in section two from 25 on, and so obviously the challenger rating means that he's going to hurt through the block. He's a uh, higher rank, rank two. I only have a four star or rank four Omega Sentinel, but she is still tanky with her armor. Um, this is my last Omega Sentinel fight. And so I figure I'm just going to, I'm not going to worry about uh, triggering the intercept for the Fury because I don't want to deal with a random um, prowess that he happens to gain at the wrong time or something from, from clearing that. So I'm just kind of gauging how much damage she's doing. Um, I'm blocking those, uh, those hits. I'm using a combat regen just to, to kind of mitigate the damage at the beginning as I gauge what's happening. And my thought is I'm going to go to an SP3 and I'm going to let the uh, six incinerates then, um, then trigger. I can dex that SP1. I'm just using the, I'm just blocking it just, just to be super safe. This is the last war of the season. The score is five to one and they're up big on fights and we need to win this to clinch masters. So I throw this SP3 uh, right here, even though I, he didn't dump his power because I don't care if I push him to two bars. Um, and I, I want to see what the, the uh, tick is going to be at. And it's, it's at 1.4. Even with protection, it's still ticking for about 3k a second. I'm like, oh, now I'm cooking. Um, this is perfectly fine. I'm just going to play this completely safe. Um, I did heavy earlier. Or, or, sorry. Um, I did throw a heal block on him earlier just to, to mitigate some of the regen that he gets. Um, and, you know, he's being a little passive. And I, I don't want to lose my... Um, my incinerates but um he's he's uh, ultimately melting now so it's just it's just fine at this point i know that i'm going to throw a sp2 um i want him to throw this and he just throws it immediately so it's like perfect so i'm like come at me um and he hits into my block and gets some prowess i, I want to throw the sp2 and not the sp3 because i don't want the incinerate to fall off i i throw this and i land uh, a few more incinerates and uh he's basically dead at this point, he's uh, he's all, all all gone. So it could have been that faster, but we were really looking to uh, to win. On we were we were up on time a bit, so it was more so not about not to not die. Next up, I have this Mysterio. Now, one would think that the Infuriate and the Intimidate, you know, would fall off with the um, Mighty Charge. However, the thought process here is to not let Mysterio get to an SB2. Usually, you don't like the SB1 because he, you have to wait out that that period where you know you can't hit him but i'm using a power start one and and she is so great with a power start one in her uh, special two because all i have to do is build my emotions and i don't care if he shrugs the infuriate because that's going to make him come at me um so what i'm going to do initially is just parry and uh well i missed that parry but i'm going to put the infuriate uh, intimidate on him and then i'm going to hit into his block and build my emotions you see i'm almost at a bar and a half and uh right here I'm like, all right, get my get my infuriate uh, on him. He's gonna come at me, and I want him to throw this because what uh, what I want to happen is uh, is he dumps his power here, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna place uh, an intimidate on him, and then uh, oh sorry, I'm gonna get an intercept. I'm waiting this out, and I, right here I do a, I do an intercept with that infuriate comes at me. Then I intimidate him. I get the last emotions that I need. Heavy charge, and I know he's dead. I'm just watching my Fury, the protectionist, he's come up, but it, he's completely shattered. Like, that's 270k SP2, and she's just so great for, for war, for, for war, for war health uh, pools. 
Now, next up is this Photon, which everybody's favorite defender this season. Um, and she's obviously giving people headaches all over the map. However, I initially did a bunch of duels to try to slow down my combo to not get any debuffs because Photon places a lot of debuffs. As I'm checking my boost and making sure everything is, is, is the last fight of the season for me, I remember that Andrew had a power start one uh, and had suicides on, and I'm like, oh my god, I should check if I have suicides, but I already threw my power, my, my, uh, power start one boost. I don't care. I have time on it. I'm going to go check to see what my, uh, my uh, mastery setup is and, uh, and just make sure that I don't start with some debuffs because she will stop the power star one basically from proccing. So um, now we're ready to go back in and it's a similar strategy except I'm not going to parry. You don't want to parry her because then she goes invisible or she phases, right? So I'm going to beta heavy and then I'm going to land and intimidate and then I'm going to beat her block and get my emotions up. And then, um, then I'm gonna basically um, bait an SB1 from her. And uh, and once I bait the SB1, I'm gonna make sure that I get an intercept and throw my special two, just like before. So um, this is going rather well. Um, I, I'm not, like I said, I decided this is not hazard shift. I'm just, I just don't need to play or slow down the combo to keep my tranquilize up. Um, and uh, right there, she throws her SB1 because I infuriate her. And she, catches me with it but I'm like you know what I'll take the extra power I beta heavy here I go to land uh, an intercept I get it I'm at 20 and that's all she wrote at this point I know she's gonna die and she does 116k 174k special 2 and she is dead and that was my war um, for the last war of the season um, so and this is a uh, this is mad cat taking the boss with uh, quicksilver and this is what uh, war planners do. Watch those little red timers as they, uh, as they, you know, people are in fights and just waiting to see what happens. He, uh, he absolutely killed it. We, we thought we needed that that win to lock masters. It was five to four at that point, so we definitely needed that um, that uh, that win. I have no idea why masters locked um, was censored by Kabam, but I guess. But you can see everybody in the alliance was watching. It was the last fight of the of the war, so the last you know last bit, little bit that could go wrong. He absolutely smashed um, a uh, a mango in just over a minute with Quicksilver as well on 54. Then he took that Wong, which he took earlier in the season. So uh, you know it's it's always good when everybody's kind of uh, you know watching together and, and rallying the troops and um, and we uh, we close out the season. Um, you know, strong and and we did need some. Uh, uh, oh, I guess he beat uh, he beat Mike's time with Titania versus uh, uh, the boss um, with Quicksilver. So you know, people give Quicksilver a lot of a lot of crap for for being such a slow war attacker and stuff. But let's take a look at the uh, the stats. You see, we won five to four. Um, we, we were winning on time, so that was not the issue. And um, you know, it's like I said, great, great way to end the season. We had a really rough season at the start, and we kind of like you know settled down a bit. But we would love to take some some you know deaths back. But shout out to Andrew, Smugs, and Karate Mike for the MVPs, and um, and let's take a look at my final season stats. I had quite a bit of variety with um, war attackers. Um, I had about like. I think 13 I brought 14 different champs to war I think 12 of them I actually used and you know Professor X Omega Sentinel and Hulk actually were the bulk of it I died four times in the first war first four wars and then none after that so I settled down so that was that was obviously good to do as the season went on this was a very fun season I didn't realize I used so many different champions um, and it's, you know, like, I, I know that I'm comfortable with, with most champions or some champions. Obviously, I understand the mechanics. But uh, bringing them to war is always a little nerve-wracking. Like, Hulk, obviously, when I, I've been saying Hulk would be great for war for, for a while. But then I had to bring him in. And I was like, man, he better not let me down here. And then after I used him, he was just he was an absolute blast to play in, uh, in war. Sure, he surprised me a lot. And I've loved her for, for a long time. So that was cool. And it was fun to, to bring Mantis in. So that's it for the war season. Um, we will see you guys uh, next season. Catch you soon.